Good morning guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a spare wheel delete on our Jeep. Now there's a few different reasons you might be doing this. One, you might be upgrading your tyre carrier to run bigger tyres. Whatever it might be, ours is completely, ours is actually a little bit cracking it from the factory one, as you guys will see in a minute. And I've taken it off to give a nice deep clean. I can see a lot of dirt and dust building up in areas that I don't want it and it'll cause rust over time. As I said, it might be a variety of applications why you might be taking this off. Just a straight spare wheel delete. We'll show you the process of that. Pretty much the same process, but you just might be using a cover plate um, to finish off the process at the end. But it's really straightforward. Minimal tools. Anybody can do this at home with a couple tools you can buy from Super Cheap Auto or Ripco or a few tools that people might already have at home. All you'll need is a high iron to get your spare wheel off. Um, and you also might need a locking nut as well. Now, our one's actually connected with a lock nut on it so if you go through your jeep if you can't find one you might be able to buy one online so it's a 19 mil socket to be able to get your spare wheel off also you'll need a t socket uh, most a lot of jeeps have these t sockets um, as their bolts this is the t20 so you'll need that to take a few things from the spare wheel light off you also need a 14 mil socket to be able to get the uh, remaining bolts from the spare wheel carrier off so that's pretty much it pretty straightforward process so let's go on to it, remove the spare wheel. Now to get your spare wheel off, just support it with your leg. Um, if you're not strong enough or you've got an oversized spare wheel, and that way you can just lift it straight off and place it straight down. If you do need help, get someone else to do it, because they can be quite heavy and you don't want to hurt your back. So as soon as you take your spare wheel off, you'll find a range of different bolts um, up here. Now I've already taken some of mine off and I realised, hey, maybe we should make a video about this. Might have a few people out. So these are all 14mm bolts. Um, as you can see, behind mine it's really dirty. A lot of built up grime and stuff. And a nice, nice little bit of mould building up as well. you also notice, as I said when we started the video, we've got a crack in our spare wheel carrier just there. Now it's a very common issue for these to crack. Uh, they're just made out of, I think it's like thin, just a thin sort of metal. A lot of people do upgrade these with two run bigger tyres or a full tyre carrier package. Uh, now I'm either going to have to fix that, maybe weld it, or go to Rickers and find a replacement one, which isn't the end of the world. So before you undo these bolts, I'll loosen all mine off. Um, and to remove the switch or the uh, light for this, the rear tail light, the third brake light, at the back um, is the T20 um, torx bits. Uh, there's just two at the top and two in the centre that you'll take off and then it just pulls off by the front and at the back you'll see the switch. All you not need to do is grab it from the top, pull down and it clicks out just like that. Now you'll see my one's got a lot of dead spiders and stuff built up behind it. I'll be cleaning all this before we put it back on, just for peace of mind for us, and that's pretty disgusting having that on there. Now with the wire, just tuck straight back through the spare wheel carrier and out. Now if you are dealing your tyre uh, carrier, you might be able to remove that bung and thread that back through. Uh, we'll be just pushing it through because we'll be running no tyre for a while. But in the next video we'll have replacement hinges, um, heavy duty hinges to replace these ones. So we need to replace our, remove our tyre carrier anyway. So to remove all these bolts around, you've got two, four, six, eight. Eight bolts around, so you'll need your 14mm socket. And you can just go around and loosen them all up. Now that we've got the spare wheel carrier off, you can see how much crap is built up around these hinges and it's starting to look like a little bit of surface rust around these bolts. Now if you are doing a, uh, like a poison spider delete plate, all you'll need to do is remove this, remove your two bungs, which I think is a T20 
Torx bit in there as well. I'm not 100% sure on that, so just figure that out when you're doing it. And you'll probably also need to remove this, which I'm pretty sure you just pull out. And obviously that's like a little vent that runs to the back of your Jeep. You can see in the back of ours, it is filthy. So what we're going to be doing is cleaning all this up in preparation to put our carrier back on after we fix it. Uh, but if you are doing a delete plate, I would clean all that, save it from rusting and corroding. And that's the inside of your Jeep there. Oh. So if we move that. You can see through those vents some daylight and that's the inside of your vent there. So having that nice and clean will be a big bonus. Which is pretty blade disgusting. Anyway, let's give that a nice deep clean. If you are deleting a um, full delete delete plate, I think you can actually reu reuse your original bolts. We'll be giving these a good clean up. I don't know if you guys can see how rusty those are actually getting. We'll give those a good clean up. Clean all that up. We'll be good. somewhat dry you can see the parts that we kind of have to deal with the inside is looking a lot better uh, but to restore the paint we'll be using Bound Zone paint cleanse and restore this stuff is awesome restores paint shine uh, use a use before wax deep clean so we'll be using this first to get up the paint nice and clean then be sealing out with some more Bound Zone stuff as well but we might give it another bit of a clean and kind of clean up the entire huh now since uh, I actually have the spare removed you can see there's a gap in the stool there I wonder if I should be replacing that sill in there. So I know that's why water leaks in and stuff. Anyway, so I'll be using a bit of this. This can be bought at Super G Border or you can buy it online. Bastard. A bit more than I normally use. It happens. Probably in the, when was the manufacturing date? Uh, the, you guys don't have to do this, but if you are replacing it with that block off panel, like the Terraflex one, it might be a good idea to do that, just so the inside of it's nice and protected. And when it also rains, rain will, water will build up behind there and all the dirt from there will actually seep down. You'll start getting all these marks down the bottom um, and then you start getting those sort of runs, sort of like you see there, um, obviously there's dirt built up behind the hard top, so that kind of just fills up with water, drips down, and it'll just look yuck. I mean, you, don't have, you guys don't have to be perfectionists, it is a four-wheel drive, but it's nice to start off with a clean car. Alright, that's it for today, guys. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe button. If it helped you guys with either removing your spare tyre or deleting your spare tyre, leave me know in the comments. I love reading the comments. I love engaging with you guys, getting your thoughts on either what the video is like, what we can improve on, what we can do next time and other video ideas as well and if you guys aren't already find me on instagram we do like little behind the scenes things show you guys what we're doing about the whole process then we make a video about it and then we put it on youtube so if you guys did like this video please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already really would really help me out leave me a comment whatever it might be but thank you guys so much for watching really appreciate it and i'll see you guys next week